Hey, hey there, chemistry team. It's your chemistry coach coming at ya. Oh, new shirt. Do you like that one? <laughs> we are into a new chapter this time. We're going to be looking at chemical reactions. So pretty much most of this entire semester, we've just been looking how to speak the language of chemistry, right? What's the alphabet, right? Looking at the elements and their symbols. What are words? Putting elements together to make compounds and how to figure that stuff out. So we've been doing all that just to prepare for this. So now, just like any language, if you know the alphabet, you know how to make words, we can put those together to make sentences and have some cohesive language interaction right on so chemistry is just another language once you learn it you can start doing some cool stuff with it so now let's put it all together these are like the sentences in chemistry we can start mixing some stuff and that's where it gets fun in lab right let's take a little bit of this take a little bit of that mix them together Woo! what happened this is how we're going to deal with it all right so now remember, a chemical reaction is just a fancy name for a chemical change that's going on. And if we and what we learned before, that's due to a rearrangement of atoms. So we've got this rearrangement of atoms. The proportions of those atoms change, creates new species. So we're going to learn in this chapter how to represent that with chemical equations in a little bit. Now, once you rearrange those atoms and create new atomic combinations with those elements, that creates new physical and chemical properties, right? These species we form have different properties, both chemical and physical, than the chemical and physical properties of the original species we started with, reactants and products. So we'll talk about these terms you already know, but we'll put them, we'll officialize them later. That gives us a chance in a laboratory or real life setting to really just kind of watch and see what's happening and go, oh, I saw that happen. So that's an indication to me that a chemical reaction has occurred, some kind of chemical change has occurred. Because if the, the visible to our pathetic human eyeballs, macroscopic, you know, physical properties of something, we'll talk about those things like colors or whatever. If we could see those change in a laboratory, we can go, the only reason that property could have changed is we have formed a new substance which was due to a chemical uh, and an atomic rearrangement creating new species that's a chemical reaction so let's look at the, what the typical signs of a chemical reaction are i'm going to go into a lot more detail of that in the laboratory setting as far as what we could see in lab but we'll just kind of theoretically look at it real quick uh, and then we can have how we can transition from this reaction that we've observed to how we can write that reaction down on a piece of paper all right so let me get a new board here let's look up different signs of a chemical reaction okay let's go through some of just the simplistic types of things we could see with our eyeballs in a real life situation you'll probably do this in your uh, in your chemistry laboratories um i think the most obvious would be a color change right at least for me i go oh the color change why is the color change? Why is it a new color? Because we have a new substance, a new species that's formed due to a chemical uh, reaction from a rearrangement of atoms. So that's the first, I think, most obvious sign. Is that always going to happen? No, but it's a huge indication that a chemical reaction has occurred. So let's just do a simple one here. Go to put my goggles on. I wish I had a test tube at home, but I don't. But I got a little beaker here. And it doesn't matter what the chemicals are, right? That's not real critical. So let's see what we can have. Let's take something that's kind of this, this light blue color here, right? Let me put some of that inside this beaker here. So we got, you can, once, it, once you see it outside of that, it's pretty light blue. See that? And let's add some of this and see if we can see some kind of change. Let me give you a white background here. All right, so pretty distinct, right? We have this kind of a faint blue, and you'd expect if we added this clear colorless solution to it, it would dilute that blue color from our natural, you know, indication that uh, common sense would say hey if you're adding not that it's water but it looks like water but as a kid grown up you know i got my great kool-aid or whatever and i add more water and i dilute it it gets kind of a, a lighter purple color or something all right 
you wouldn't expect it to get darker. So we've, we went from a very, very, very light blue color to a very, very dark blue color. And sometimes the color changes are massively dramatic. You'll mix two colorless solutions and form something that's black or mix something pink with something colorless and form something that's red or purple. You're like, whoa, it's so cool. This is one of the biggest reasons I became a chemist because I remember in high school, my chemistry instructor uh, was doing some... Uh, had like three or four things. I think it was called patriotic precipitates or something. And and it was like, boom, and the uh, white precipitate, boom, and a red precipitate, boom, and a, and a blue precipitate. I was like, oh, wow, that was so cool. It was like magic. <laughs> I just loved it. So that's an indicator that some kind of new species had been formed. All right. So let's look at the next one. I think that's uh, kind of uh, obvious that you would see. And this is a fun one. Um, where we are forming a new phase, right? So let's say you have a solid and a solution, right? But let's say we form a gas. Where did the gas come from, right? That's a, that had to have come from a chemical rearrangement. So let's do the next one as gas formation. Let's write that in there. Let's do that in black. And again, in lab, we're going to hit this in a lot more detail of what to look for in a laboratory and what to call it, you know, effervescence, things like that. Now, for gas formation, I'm not going to include um, a typical phase change. Yes, we're forming a new phase, right? But it's not a physical change like evaporation or boiling where we're going from a liquid to a gas, right? So that will not include... So we're going to go not including, so remember those two phase changes that were physical changes that formed gases, uh, liquid to gas and solid to gas. So not including evaporation. So that liquid to gas conversion, that's a physical change. We're not changing identity, so that would not count as a chemical change. And what was the solid to gas one? Sublimation. Right on. So most commonly, this is going to be one where you've got two non-gas phase species, um, usually a solution with a solid. Not necessarily. You'll see a whole bunch of different ones in the lab. So let me get this all set up. I'm going to pause it and get a new beaker here, clean this up, and we'll do a gas formation test. All right, here's a scenario for you. Looks like water, but it, you don't know in chemistry, right? So we just got this, you know, clear colorless liquid. So let's take this little piece of solid here. You don't even need to know what it is, right? In laboratory, we would identify what it is. And we're going to go through that in the laboratory. But let's drop this in there and see what happens. Woo! I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear the bubbling? All right? So I see a color change there. Can you see the bubbles? Right? There's some major bubble formation there. So look at that. Cool, huh? So we got serious bubbling, and there's a fancy term for that, effervescence. So that obviously is a sign that there's a chemical reaction going on. Oh, let me clean it up. We'll do the next one. Ready for the third sign of a chemical reaction you'll see? Right? That last one was pretty obvious. You put, you know, it's like, whoa, I see a constant rate of bubbling. Well, that's crazy. There's some, some things you'll have to watch in the lab video on this where that could create some confusion. So watch that one where you might see some bubbles, but it's actually not due to a chemical reaction. But watch the lab video for that one, more specifics. So anyway, but that one was pretty obvious. You saw this constant fizzing and bubbling going on. And sometimes you'll see a combination. You'll see a color change and a gas formation, the bubbles, or a solid formation and a color chain, right? So, you know, so you'll get different. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two or three. Um, so the next one, you know, similar to the gas formation, which is actually, you know, we, we formed a new substance with a different phase of what we had before. And, and again, it cannot be a phase change, which is a physical transformation. So solid formation, and I'm going to add on there after mixing solutions. This is typically where we get it from. So you couldn't do like uh, freezing, like, you know, take liquid water and freeze it and create ice. Oh, well, there's a phase change. Well, that's a physical change. We haven't changed its identity. This has to be a change in identity. So let's say we've got a you know, clear colorless solution here. Let's add 
something. And again, at this point, we don't care what it is. Let's add some stuff in there. Can you see the chunks floating in there? All right. So I see a color change, but there's also this gooey, gooey solid that's in there. I'll add a little bit more in there. This is my favorite type of solid. It's called a gelatinous precipitate. It's a really gooey. Sometimes you got to swirl it to see it. But yeah, can you see that? It's like this gooey, gelatinous, chunky precipitate that's in there. You can see a, when I swirl it, you see a little bit sticking up on the side of the beaker there. So there we've got these particles that weren't there before. Wow, well, we didn't have a, a solid to start with. We had these two, I had this clear light blue solution and a clear colorless solution, and now I've got this chunky blue precipitate sitting in there. Well, that phase wasn't there before, so that's an indicator that some kind of reaction has occurred. And we'll look at precipitation reactions in great detail in the next chapter, which is crazy. All right, let me clean my stuff out, and we'll do the last but not least sign of a chemical reaction. We've come to my possibly personal favorite. Now, you're not going to see this every time, but when you do, it's pretty obvious <laughs> and usually a whole lot of fun. And we try to keep this to a minimum in undergraduate chemistry labs. Energy change. And we're going we're gonna to cover energy in a later chapter and really hard in second semester general chemistry. But right now, we're just looking at matter and matter transformation, right? We'll look at energy later, but it turns out with with matter transformations, there's a corresponding energy transformation. Not always something detectable macroscopically by us, but sometimes it is. Pretty neat. So three things that I've run into in my life. Formation of heat, you know, how, what's, how would we perceive that energy change? Well, um, either a release of, temp of uh, heat or absorption of heat. Right? So maybe maybe that reaction requires heat and it sucks it from its surroundings and that would feel real cold to us, right? Or maybe it releases energy, right? There's an energy change and that excess energy is released to the environment as heat. We'll learn these terms as exothermic and endothermic later on down the semester. But it would feel hot, right? If I mix some things up, whoa, that's really hot, like cold packs and heat packs. You've probably experienced those before. Light, right? That's a fun one. I like to do one with um, uh, magnesium. I like to heat, I don't have a Bunsen burner with me, but just take a chunk of magnesium and some tongs, heat them up, and whoa, it's super, super bright. It can almost be blinding. Uh, and then flame, one of my personal favorites. So I've uh, hurt myself pretty good uh, with a hydrogen oxygen balloon. Not going to demo that here and made it this big and boom! <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not judge properly the size of the mini fireball that I would have formed there when I was doing a live demo from a class once. Oopsie, it happens sometimes. Yeah, since the eyebrows a little bit. Um, but flame and light, just go to any 4th of July fireworks display and you're talking cool, cool energy changes. And you'll see a lot of color changes as well. That's amazing the colors of fireworks they can get. Um, but, you know, you get sparklers and light, and you can see a whole bunch of cool stuff. Sometimes you'll see the flame going on. Fun, fun, fun. Um, but heat, you can't, oh, you can't see, per se. So it might, you might do this, and, and it would look to you like there's no sign of a chemical change until you feel it. So we're going to find out in lab. You might mix some stuff and go, no, oh, shaky, shaky, shaky. doesn't look like anything's happening. But then you touch it or you smell it, all right? Sometimes we'll find out with the gas formation, sometimes you don't see bubbles. Sometimes you smell a new odor, and that's because of a different species in the gas phase that's formed. And we'll do the details of that in the lab. But I'm just going to mix what looks like two clear colorless solutions. Nothing too terribly exciting going on. All right, I'll mix those in there. Swirl that up a little bit. It looks like diddly squat happened. Right? No color change, no gas formation, no particles in there. But when I touch that, see, touch it. Do you feel how hot that is? <laughs> you can't do that one. You can't see it with your eyes. That's distinct. That's uncomfortably warm. So that is an indicator to me. Even though I don't see any of the first three, I feel this getting very, very warm. And that would be the observation you'd make in the laboratory, which we're going to hit on. What do you observe? And then we conclude there was a chemical reaction from that. You don't say, hey, I saw a chemical reaction. No, no. I felt 
this get warmer. That's an indicator, and I'll conclude from that there was an energy change, and therefore that was a chemical reaction. And what we're going to do for this chapter and the next chapter is look at, this will be more lab stuff, but look at how do we represent these reactions? How do I represent this heat formation on paper? Right? Uh, and then what different types of reactions are there and how would I know what kind of theoretically what would form and how would I see that in the laboratory? Could I actually predict all of these signs of chemical changes in a laboratory before I actually did it? Would I be able to or at least to some extent? So we'll get into equations in a little bit, but for now at least you know what you're looking for in lab. Now let's learn how to write that on paper. You guys rock.